and Zoom preparing the live stream, the meeting. <clears throat> Setting up your meeting. And I, I have it uh, open as Done. well so I can see. And awesome. So we are live. Welcome, everybody. My name is Karine Davidson Taylor. I'm with Royal Botanical Gardens and I'm in my basement in Guelph. And this is Justin, my colleague. And he is in Hamilton or is it Halton region where you are, Justin? I am in Burlington. Okay, great. And he's at home as well. So welcome, everybody. Um, I'm so glad you could join us here for Creatures with Wings and Crawly Things. So we're going to, first of all, take a look at where we are in relation to each other, because that's important that we know where Royal Botanical Gardens is. So uh, some of you may be in the Halton area, some of you may be in the Hamilton area, or some of you may be in areas around us as well. So I'm going to go a little bit closer so you can see exactly where we are. And there's Royal Botanical Gardens, a huge, great, big, beautiful bit of green right here. It's about 1,100 hectares. And of that 1,100 hectares, you know, only 100 of it is gardens. The rest is natural sanctuaries. So what I want to also start off with was is today is National Indigenous Peoples Day. And I'm so pleased that we can make sure that we recognize the long history of the First Nations and Métis people in the province of Ontario. And I want to pay respects to the Six Nations, the Grand River Territory, and the Mississaugas of the Credit First Nation, uh, who are the treaty holders with the Crown for the lands that we are on. So we have a very important role to look after these lands and the water and the air all around us, because this is habitat for so many different living things. The other thing I want to do is I want to let you know that if you ever come to Royal Botanical Gardens, you are on the traditional territories of the Haudenosaunee, of the Huron-Wendat, and of the Anishinaabe. So let's get started. The first thing I need to do is we're going to discover what exactly an insect is. We're gonna play a little game. And to play that game, what you're going to do is you're going to, if you agree with what I'm showing you, you're gonna give me a thumbs up to say yes, there you go. If you're gonna say, no, 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 Kari, that's just silly. You're gonna give me a thumbs down. But there's a third choice, a sideways thumb, because maybe you're not sure and that's okay because that's what we're here for today. So let's start. So I'm going to quickly start with this and here is our first question. Insects have six legs. So think about it. And if you've got a decision, show your teacher, show everybody what it is. And let's find out. Let's go. And oh, look at that. Yes, insects have six legs. Now, if they have, if an animal has less than six legs, so four legs like a cat or a dog, not an insect, two legs like us or a bird, not an insect. If it's got more than six legs, eight legs, like a spider, not an insect. 68 legs, like a millipede, not, a, not an insect. They may be related to insects, but not insects. So let's take a look at some insects and their six legs. So we've got a tiger beetle here with these long, long legs, great for running and you know going through forests and rocks. And then we've got a grasshopper. Look at those great big legs. Uh, those aren't running legs though. Those look more like, hmm, jumping legs, yeah just like a frog might have, or a kangaroo, or even when you crouch down and get ready to hop, your legs are gonna bend like that. So those are jumping legs. And when we're speaking of grasshoppers, you know, they like to live in grass. And the one thing about a grasshopper, yep, it eats plants. Okay, so let's take a look 
at this beetle. Now this is a water beetle. And a water beetle doesn't have jumping legs, doesn't have running legs. Look at these legs. These. Now think about what you would do in the water. Mm-hmm. Swim. You're right. These are swimming legs. So they're like paddles so they can push itself along. And then we've got this fly. Now we all know flies fly, but they also walk on walls. They've got little sort of sharp claws at the end of their feet to help them hold on. They've got pads on their feet. But here's the amazing thing about insects is that some insects use their feet to taste with. So I, I'm just curious, can you show me or can you show everybody, what do you use to taste with? Uh, that's right. Good job, Justin. That's right. Your tongue. That's right. We taste with our tongue. So imagine if you were an insect, you might have tongues on your feet. Okay. So I've got another insect that I want to show you. And this actually, I think one of our friends asked a question um, about caterpillar legs. So let me show you this. I'm just wondering, Justin, if I've got that question there. So let me show you this little video that I have of this caterpillar. And you may recognize this caterpillar. So let's just watch it walk for a little bit. So this is a woolly bear caterpillar. And when we were going for a walk on the trail, this little caterpillar was there right beside us. So we kept watching it and it's actually in the fall, this little caterpillar will snuggle down um, in grass and leaves because this is how this little caterpillar survives the winter. And we're going to talk about a couple of other ways that some insects survive the winter. So look at that little caterpillar go. So let me stop for a minute because I'm going to show you what its legs are like. So let me switch over. And we'll go back to our presentation. And this is that little caterpillar upside down. So a caterpillar does have those six insect legs. And I believe, um, Justin, who asked that question? About yeah, so this question came from our friends from Dr. Davy Public School, the kindergarten class of Miss Turek, Miss M. Uh, and Tammy Garrett. Mm -hmm. And Miss M, I think, was the other teacher there. Yes. Yeah, kindergarten A, that's right. So this is what we see. So you are right. In, so it doesn't matter whether it's a caterpillar or an adult, or it's if it's got six legs, and there are the six legs. Look at this. One, two, three, four, five, six. Those are its insect legs. Those are the legs that it uses to move with. These legs here, I know you can see them. These legs are what we call pro legs or false legs. They're not real legs, but they're just big pieces of muscle that help hold that caterpillar in place. Otherwise, it might fall right off that plant. So it holds them in place. Okay, let's take a look at our next question. So insects have two antennae. Those are things on the top of the head. Insects have two antennae. What do you think? Think about it. Yes? No? Not sure. Okay. Justin's thinking about it. Let's see. Okay. Let's find out. Ready? Here we go. Oh, they do have two antennae. So let's take a look at some of those antennae. So here is a tiger swallowtail. Look at those long antennae. But look at this moth. Oh, look at those antennae, great big antennae. Now this moth is a nighttime flyer. So it's not going to depend, it's not gonna depend on its eyes as much as it's going to depend on its antennae to help it find its food. Sometimes we call these antennae feathery antennae because they look like feathers. And here is another insect. Now this is a beetle. 
And so if we look closely at this beetle here, let's go a little closer and look at its antennae. They look like little tiny balls all in a row. Look at that. So some antennae are long, some antennae are big feathery ones, some antennae are very, you know, look like different balls, some are short, some are long. They do, they are all sorts of different shapes and sizes, but they all do the same job. So I want you to imagine you've come across that flower and you can see that flower, but what else do you like to do when you come to flowers? So think about what you like to do. So you've come to a flower, oh, oh, it's so pretty. What do you like to do with flowers? Oh, smell them, that's right. Okay, so you like to smell them, but wait a minute, what do you use to smell with? What do you use to smell with? So I'm gonna just stop, stop sharing so we can see. What do you use? Can you point to what you use to smell with? Oh, your nose, exactly, you use your nose. So, wait a minute, I've got news for you. Insects don't have noses. Oh, wait a minute, wait a minute, what else do you do with your nose? Okay, hold on, what else do you do with your nose? Ah, uh, I see some people getting my big hand. Yes, Justin, you're right. You breathe with your nose. Oh, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Uh, insects don't have noses. No noses. So wait, how do they breathe? We know they smell with their antennae, but how do they breathe? So I'm actually going to use a great big butterfly that I have here to help me show you that. So look at this big butterfly. So let me see if we can, ah, there. So I'll, let me just go back so you can actually see this butterfly. So this is what they call, this is a bird wing butterfly. Now this butterfly doesn't come from Canada. This one comes from another part of the world, but let me show you how big it is compared to a monarch. Look at that. So this, is a really big butterfly, but it uses the same way to breathe like all insects do. And let's go right up here. Okay, let's go a little bit closer. So this part of the body, this part of the body is called the abdomen. And if you look very carefully, you'll see a little black spot there, a little black spot there, and there, and there, and there. These are their breathing holes. So they would breathe, if you were an insect, you'd breathe from little holes at the side of your body. Now, I'm gonna use this butterfly to give us a big hint about for the next question. So here's my finger. And this next question is about insect body parts, the number of insect body parts. So what I want you to do is every time you see me put my finger down, you count. Ready, go. Okay, let's find out if you have the answer. Let's see what this next question is. Insects have three body parts. Yes, no. I'm still not sure. And that's okay, because that's what we're here for today. So, hmm, yes, no, not sure. Three body parts. Think about what I pointed to. Okay, ready? Here we go. Oh, well done, another one, three for three. So let's take a look a little bit closer. All right, so. We have this big, beautiful bumblebee, and I'm gonna show you those three parts. So the first part is a head, just like it's called for us. And that's where their eyes, antennae, and mouth is. And then we've got this middle section where the wings and the legs are. 
and that is called the thorax. So if you'd like to try and say that word with me, thorax. Nice job. And the last one is this great big one where the guts are and where the breathing holes are. And this is called the abdomen. So you can try saying that word too, abdomen. Nice job. So it doesn't matter whether it is a butterfly, a moth, a dragonfly, a caterpillar, an ant, a grasshopper, a beetle, a ladybug, a mosquito, a bumblebee, a wasp or a grub. It doesn't matter. If they have two antennae, six legs, and three body parts, that is an insect. So to help us remember these things, what I'd like to do is I'd like to teach you an action song. So I'm going to sit back a little bit, but I would love it if everybody could stand up, get yourselves, give yourself some room, stand up. And I'm gonna teach you the actions and the words first, and then I'll teach you the song. So this is how it goes. So follow my actions, repeat my words. Here we go. Head, thorax, abdomen, abdomen. Abdomen, yep, three times. Head, thorax, abdomen. Two antennae, six crazy legs. Okay, so that's how it goes. Those are the words and actions. I'm gonna sing it one time so you can hear the tune. I think when you hear the tune, you're gonna go, wait a minute. Because I think it's gonna sound familiar. So this is how it goes. Head, thorax, abdomen, abdomen, abdomen. Head, thorax, abdomen, two antenna, six crazy legs. So uh, did any of you recognize that song? Mm -hmm. But we are insects. We are not humans right now. So. Let's try that one time together. We're going to do it three times, actually. First, slow. Make sure everybody gets it. Second, a little faster. Third, even faster. So here it goes. I'll count you in. One, two, three. Head, thorax, abdomen, abdomen, abdomen. Head, thorax, abdomen, two antennae, six crazy legs. Oh, you guys are good. Adjust and wonderful actions there. Okay. And here we go. A little faster. Okay. Ready? One, two, three. Head, thorax, abdomen, abdomen, abdomen. Head, thorax, abdomen, two antennae, six crazy legs. Okay. Whoa, you guys are good. You guys are good. Okay. Even faster. Let's see what we can do. Here we go. One, two, three. Head, thorax, abdomen, abdomen, abdomen. Head, thorax, abdomen, two antenna, six crazy legs. Oh, you guys were wonderful. Okay, sit yourselves down. Let's get comfortable because now I think it's time for us to answer some of those amazing questions, other questions that came in to us. So what do we got? Awesome. So yeah, so... I feel like a lot of questions were already answered through that presentation. Definitely, There was a lot of cool insects that we already got to see. Uh, and we learned a lot about uh, some of them and, and what they do and what they look like. But you mentioned uh, one butterfly that's not from Canada. Uh, so one question that came in from the class uh, of Alice King at St. Vincent de Paul, uh, they were wondering why don't some bugs live here in Canada? Well, you know, it, it, so, so what it has to do with, and this is from, uh, yeah, Miss Alice, Miss King's uh, kindergarten class. That's right. You know what? Some insects don't live in Canada. They live in other places of the world because that's where they found the best place for them to be. Maybe they don't do so well in the winter, or maybe they can't find the food that they want. Or maybe they need to, you know, have something that, you know, work with another animal. So, you know, different insects come from all sorts of different places in the world. Here, 
one thing I can show you is, uh, and it's absolutely amazing when you think about this, do you know that there are about a million different species of insects? There are more insects in the world than any other type of animal or plant. So insects are, there are a lot of them. There are a lot of them. So yeah, so insects live all over the world, except perhaps maybe Antarctica, but even then I wouldn't, I wouldn't say absolutely not. You can just never know what we're going to discover. So, and, and, and also, I mean, when you think about it, there are, so there are more insects in this part of Canada compared to Nunavut, which is north of us, but there are more insects south of us than there are in our area. So the warmer it is, the more insects there are. It's easier for them to live. So that brings us to kind of our next question from our friends at Dr. Davy Public School. And, mm -hmm. and that's how many different kinds of insects live in Hamilton? Well, you know what? I had to think about this and I had to, because I mean, I, I honestly don't know. So I thought to myself, now where would I find that information? So I went to one of my favorite websites and actually it's a place that I contribute information to too. And it's called iNaturalist. And so I looked up iNaturalist insects, Hamilton, Ontario, and I discovered that there are more than 1,400 more than that, different species of insects. And this was just some of the insects that they had on their page. And these are all insects that people have seen and they've reported. So that's how I was able to discover this. So there are a lot of insects. And you'd be amazed at how many you could even find in your own backyard. Mm -hmm. That is incredible and there's definitely a lot to explore when it comes to these insects and uh, all the other crawly creatures as well mm -hmm. now with so many insects living here you mentioned how a lot more insects like to live where it's warm but what happens to these insects in winter because our uh, the class of Hali Tsui from Pauline Johnson school we're wondering do all insects hibernate or do they migrate uh, so definitely what what are these insects doing during the winter times? You know, insects have some amazing ways to survive the winter. So we saw our little woolly bear and it's going to, and it's really unusual actually for caterpillars to survive the winter, but it's got that lots of hair and it, it sort of cuddles down or snuggles down and in, into the leaves and, and grass. And that's where it stays for the winter. Some insects like my monarch, will fly all the way down to Mexico and that's where it will stay over winter. Some insects like a Cecropia moth. So look at this. This is a Cecropia moth cocoon. Look at the size of it. That's huge. So what will happen is the Cecropia moth, the caterpillar, will make a cocoon like this in the fall, and that's where it will stay over winter. And then what will happen is in the spring, look what comes out. It's absolutely gorgeous. We were very lucky to see this. So I'm just, I'm going to just make that bigger so you can see it. I hope you can see it. Justin, let me know if you can see my video. Yep, that is there. an absolutely beautiful moth. And this moth is one of the, is the largest moth in North America. And this is from our area too. It, it's from a lot of different parts of, of Canada. But look at that big moth. Look at its great big antennae. I hope you saw those great big antennae. Those great big feathery antennae. And it's just come out of its cocoon. It's making sure its wings are big and strong and flat. So that's why you see it doing little sort of sit-ups there because it's trying to push that liquid. So it's going to go and, and um, look for mates in the spring. So some will survive as uh, cocoons or, or chrysalids. Some will survive the winter as caterpillars or larvae. Some will survive the winter as eggs. 
It just depends on the type of insect that it is. Okay, so let's make that one smaller and let's find out if we've got another question. Yes, we do. And uh, during your presentation, we learned that insects have six legs. Yes. And there are a, a couple of questions that kind of relate to legs and maybe not so much the legs of insects because we know they have six legs now. But uh, uh, our friends in the class of Miss King uh, were wondering why do some bugs have more legs than others? Ah, so um, I know we use the word bugs all the time for talking about insects and other things that have sort of, um, you know, other sort of creepy crawly things, but we're gonna be talking, so I'm, when I talk about um, things that have more than six legs, I might be talking about spiders or I might be talking about millipedes or sow bugs or stuff like that. So I have, when I went camping, this is what I found. I found this beautiful millipede. Look at my millipede, here it is, there it is. And so this millipede, you can see all of its legs all curled up here, but this is what it looked like when it was about to go for a walk. Look at all those legs. And so some insects will have lots of legs. Some will have, you know, eight legs, some are not insects, but other animals. But with a millipede, you know, it's going to use those legs. And if one should get lost, I know that sounds kind of sad, but if a predator should get a leg, it still will have lots of legs to be able to move on. And it allows it to really scuttle away really quickly. So I've got a little video to show you of this millipede. So when we were camping, look at those legs. They almost move in a wave. Look at that. And so it really helps it get far pretty fast. So that's that, that's that millipede. And then I was gonna show another picture and that is of a spider. Now a spider has eight legs, but those back, those two legs back here, those two legs, this one here and this one here, they have a very important job when it comes to making a web. So not only is it going to be able to walk on those, but you know, it can use those other six legs to walk while it's busy doing something with those two legs. So, you know, it's sort of multi-purpose legs. <laughs> so do we have a question though, Justin, about, was there something about spiders? Yeah, you are absolutely right. The class of Miss Leon from Canadian Martyrs was, was asking what or how do spiders make their webs? Mm-hmm. Well, spiders have a, a really important part of their body and it's this part right here, right at the very, and it's actually underneath the spider. It's called a spinneret. And in that spinneret, there are special glands. And what they'll do is they'll combine different things together and that's what makes the silk. And so if the spider is going to start a web, sometimes what it will do is it will produce some silk, almost like a little balloon, wait for the wind to catch it, poof, and off it goes. And then that silk will attach itself to either a branch or a leaf or something close by. And that's sort of the beginning of the web. And then they might do another one where they might be able to get over to another part. And they're gonna sort of create a little bridge between those two. And then gradually they're going to make some spokes that come into the center. And then they're going to make some parts. Then they're going to have these parts that come around all around the outside. But all of these threads that are all these pieces of silk that are coming into the center and going around the edge, none of those are sticky or all of those are just the frame in a sense of a spider web. What they lay down last of all, oh, and by the way, that's right. I mentioned those last, those legs here. These are the legs that take the silk and sort of attach it to each other. So they don't use those other legs to do that. They only use these back two legs. So 
those two leg number four and leg number eight or whatever. So those last two legs are the ones they use. So they attach that. It's almost like put it together and then go on. So they're busy walking along with those last like busy walking along. So they do like that. And then the last step is to put the much closer together. This silk is a completely different type of silk. This is the sticky silk. And this is what's going to capture a fly or an insect that might land in it. And the other thing about insect, the other thing about spiders and their webs is they tend to build them at night. So you don't often see a spider in the daytime building its web but you do, but so they're already there for nighttime because that's when a lot of insects come out. So that is a, that's a very small picture of, of uh, a spider web. Okay, what have we got next? Fantastic, so definitely spiders are super cool and definitely uh, one of my favorite crawly creatures uh, to explore. But we're going to move on. We, we received a, a good number of questions about another popular insect this time. And uh, you talked a little bit about it already, but the ladybugs. Oh. So we have a number of questions uh, from Miss Kim's uh, kindergarten class in Kilbride Public School, uh, Miss Leon's uh, class at Canadian Martyrs. So we'll kind of go through uh, a number of these questions uh, and learn all about these popular insects. So first of all, uh, something that we all notice when we look at ladybugs are their spots. So our friends are wondering, why do ladybugs have spots? Ah, excellent question. So let me just get my little picture up here of my ladybug so you can see what I've got. So look at all the different types. I mean, this is just a drop in the bucket. There are thousands of ladybugs all over the world. But you do, you are absolutely right. A lot of them have spots. Now those spots, um, they actually have a couple of things. So we use those spots to tell us the name of the ladybug. So if it's got 12 spots, we call it a convergent ladybug. That's the name of it. If it's got no spots, we call it a polished ladybug. If it's got seven spots, we call it a seven spotted ladybug. So we use those spots to help us think of names for those ladybugs. Now, was there another question about color or something like that? Oh yeah. So that's right. So those, I guess that red and black, so it has to do with the spots and the color of them. That's actually a warning color. Just like if you see red or an orange sign, you know to stop. And that's exactly what that red and black is saying, is saying, stop, don't bother me. If you do, I may spray you with some stinky stuff from my leg joints. <laughs> you see, you don't want to, so you, it's better just to leave ladybugs and let them do their thing. <laughs> okay. What and was another, another question? Yeah, there is another question kind of related to color. So Jasmine was asking, uh, are boy ladybugs a different color than girl ladybugs? You know what? I would love to say that was what it was, but unfortunately, it, 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 there isn't a difference in color. The only difference is the girl ladybugs are bigger than the boy ladybugs, but you really wouldn't notice it unless you saw them side by side. Then you could go, oh, that's a boy, that's a girl. Otherwise, it's really hard to tell if they're separate. Yeah, so girls are bigger, boys are smaller. In, in, the, lady, in the ladybug world, and actually in, in, some, in, in a few animals in the world. But yeah, that's what it is like here. Okay. So sticking with the ladybugs, Emmett asked, what do ladybugs eat? Ah, well, whether it is an adult or whether it is a larva, this is a baby ladybug, this is their favorite food, aphids. So aphids, they can eat as many as 50 aphids a day. That is just up their alley. And it doesn't matter where the ladybug lives, it's going to find something like that. It's going to find a little insect 
to eat. And it might be an aphid, it might be a potato bug, but insects on plants, that's why aphid, that's why uh, ladybugs are sort of a gardener's best friend because they really are what we call a beneficial insect. They really do help keep our plants healthy because they take care of the insects that are not doing so good, not doing good things for our plants. Fantastic. Mm -hmm. And then one last question about ladybugs. Now, we saw that there were lots of different kinds of ladybugs in that last picture. And mm -hmm. Felix was wondering, why are there so many different kinds of ladybugs? You know, it has to be the fact that they live in so many different parts of the world. And so, you know, we sometimes you see an animal that's sort of similar to another animal, but it's in another part of the world because maybe that color works better for that animal or that food is more available for that animal. So it's sort of those types of things. That little type of ladybug found that, you know, where they lived worked best. And that was, they could get everything they needed to survive. Absolutely everything they needed to survive. So there are ladybugs all over the world, except Antarctica. So they have found what they need to survive. Absolutely. That is incredible. Now you mentioned how the color on ladybugs is kind of a warning telling uh, predators to not come near, to leave the ladybug alone. Uh, but Marlo sent in a question asking, why do butterflies come in different colors? Great question, Marlo, absolutely. And you know, there's a, there's a few reasons why butterflies come in different colors. And one of those is related actually to why ladybugs are the color they are. And I'm going to give you the example whoops, of a monarch butterfly. And you see that this monarch butterfly is orange and black. And that's a warning color. That's saying, stop, don't eat me. If you do, I may give you a nuts stomach. And you know, it's because of what the caterpillars eat, the fact that they eat the milkweed. Now, so sometimes the colors are warning colors. Sometimes the colors are great ways to hide. It's camouflage. So when those wings are closed, this is a morning cloak and a morning cloak in the winter time. Actually, this is a really interesting butterfly because it survives the winter as an adult. Not too many butterflies do, but it will hide behind bark or someplace and then You'll barely see it, but what you will see is a little bit of white, almost like a little bit of snow or perhaps a little bit of birch bark, depending on where it goes. So great camouflage. And then some butterflies are the colors they are because one might be the male and one might be the female. And that's the case in the black swallowtail. This is the male and this is the female. So, you know, butterflies have some very interesting reasons for coloring. And sometimes it's also not only to camouflage, to hide, but also sometimes they're very pretty colors because they're saying, hey, you can't see me because I'm hiding in all these beautiful flowers and I'm just as beautiful as these flowers. So insects are very interesting that way. And I think, Justin, we have maybe about five more minutes or just a little bit less. And I'm hoping we can get through as many questions as possible. Mm -hmm. So uh, another kind of curious question uh, that I have here is about insects' eyes, Karine. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, I've looked at insects and sometimes insects will have two eyes but it almost some might look like they have a few more i know spiders can have a whole bunch of different eyes as well but can you can you share with us uh, some more about insects eyes so that we can mm -hmm. learn a bit about them mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and i think that question was from miss king's class um uh, and, and yes. Vincent de Paul, uh kindergarten yeah that's what i i thought i saw so here is a picture of insects and their eyes. So this is a type of fly and this is a dragonfly. And you can see all these little pieces, like all these little bits. And so insects have what are known as compound eyes. And it's when we see, it, it, it helps the insect focus on what they're looking at. 
So some insects, most insects have these compound eyes. Some insects have sort of a combination of compound eyes and eyes that see light and dark really well, like, like a dragonfly does. So this is what, this is, see where it's, we've got three different things. And this was from um, university and this was Ask the Biologist and they had these great pictures that I wanted to use. And so here, this is what we think butterflies see, but that's not the case. Insects don't see things like that. This is more like what they see. So think about, well, Minecraft and think about how all those little pixels go together to make that picture. It's a similar type of thing. So all those eyes are seeing different things and together they make the whole picture. Now this is what we see. This is what we see, but this is what an insect would see, but it helps them focus in on the plant that they're going to see. So those eyes are very important for them. Fantastic. I'm definitely very happy that I have human vision. <laughs> I'm able to see the way that we do. Uh, but I uh, am just noticing that there's a, a question about metamorphosis. Mm. So metamorphosis, for those of you that might not know, is how an, uh, an animal completely changes their body, completely changes what they look like as they grow throughout their life. So this question comes in uh, from Miss Garrett, Miss Turek, and Miss M. Uh, and the question is, do dragonflies go through metamorphosis? And I think you have some pretty cool stuff to show us. Mm -hmm. They absolutely do. What, what's different though about dragonflies and damselflies and praying mantis, for example, is that they only go through three parts. So what they do is they have the egg and then they have what's known as a nymph, which sort of, there's some similarity, a little bit of similarity to the adult. And then they go directly to adult. They don't go into a cocoon or a chrysalis or a pupa like a beetle would or a butterfly or a moth would. So they go through three parts and I've got things here to show you. So let me just switch through. Okay, so we've got, so whether it is a dragonfly or a damselfly, what they'll do is, is a damselfly with, will mate with another damselfly and then she will lay her eggs in the water. Eventually, those eggs will hatch. And if it's a dragonfly, this is a dragonfly nymph, so a baby dragonfly. And this is a damselfly nymph or a damselfly uh, from a damselfly. The thing is, is that they will gradually molt. And then the last molt, it will be the adult coming out. So there's no pupa. But I, yes, oh, yes, it's swimming about. Let's see if I can find him. Here he is. Let's see if we can see him. Okay, so just bear with me because he's right here. There it is. Look at that. So that is a baby damselfly. That is a damselfly nymph. So let's see if we can get a little bit closer. Let me focus a little bit better. Let me see if we can, can I get a little bit? There we go. And you can see, oh dear, I think it may have lost a couple of legs, but it's got, it, does, it should have six legs, three on this side, three on this side. It's got two eyes, there it is. It's got, look at, you can't really see its antenna, but you can see the reflection or you can see the shadow of the antennae. But what's really cool about a damselfly nymph is these things right here. This is how it breathes. It uses these little gills at the end of its abdomen to breathe with. So that's what it uses to breathe. Look at that. <laughs> so that's what it uses to breathe with. And actually, oh, now I see. Oh, wait a minute. Maybe now I understand why a leg was lost. Look at, there's another one right there. Uh, I see what's happened. I think there may have been a little bit a little fight for territory perhaps and food. Look at you can see the little antennae right there. And there are the, look at there are the gills. That's what it's using to breathe with. 
So these are little damselfly nymphs. And just to give you an idea of the size, there's my finger. So they're very small. They're very small indeed. So, so cool to be able to see that. Okay. And awesome. how are we doing for questions? Well, I think so we have like one more minute left. Mm -hmm. So uh, I wanted to kind of switch this to uh, a very general uh, question that we had from Marlowe. And also uh, it kind of ties into another question uh, from the class of Haley Tsui, which is what do bugs like to eat? Or what do gra maybe grasshoppers like to eat? A uh, uh, great question because insects eat everything. They eat all sorts of things. It just depends on where they live and what type of insect they are, but also what type of mouth they have. So if they have a chewing mouth, like a beetle or a grasshopper or a caterpillar, you can do this with me. Get your thumbs up. Put your thumbs on your cheeks. Bring your fingers around and look at, you've got a chewing mouth. You've got an insect mouth. So whether that insect is a dragonfly, whether it is, you know, a damselfly, whether it's a caterpillar, they chew their food. There's, and there is a little uh, dragonfly nymph getting ready to hunt. Watch what happens when there's a, when there's a mosquito larva. Look at that. That's its mouth. That's its lower jaw called its labium. Look how it reaches out to get that mosquito larva and yes it does get one so it's quite happy to get that so um a dragonfly nymph is going to eat a mosquito larvae a baby mosquito or the adult is a great hunter for mosquito adult mosquitoes as well some insects will eat plants like this milkweed weevil or these aphids, we've already seen aphids. Some insects will eat the nectar and the pollen, and those insects are going to help our plants and if, uh, food grow. And then you get insects that live on the forest floor, and they're the ones that are eating the dead animals and the dead plants and the poop, and the dead animals, especially like this carrion beetle. Imagine if we didn't have a carrion beetle around eating all those dead animals, we'd be, there'd be a lot of dead animals around, too many. And then finally, we've got our praying mantis here. And this praying mantis, you know, it's going to, unfortunately, we know that the praying mantis female, the girl praying mantis sometimes eats the boy praying mantis. And that happens because he wasn't fast enough. But secondly, she's getting a lot of good nutrition and all that good food is going to help make her eggs. So insects really eat some very interesting things, but we they are so important to our lives. So I want to thank everybody for joining me today. We've had a little extra long session, but I hope that's okay. So remember, when you think about insects, think about two antennae, think about six legs, crazy legs, and think about three body parts. And that's what an insect is. They live in all sorts of different places, eat all sorts of different food, but they are so important to our lives and to the environment. So thanks very much for joining me here, Karin with Royal Botanical Gardens, Justin, my friend, for helping out with this. And we shall see you all another time. Take care, everybody. Bye-bye.